Welcome back to another video on my YouTube with me, Joe. Today we're going to talk about something that I don't think we've talked about very openly before on YouTube, but it's something I'm pretty open with normally. It's pretty scared to get my videos deleted, really, just as we're on the ascendancy. We're going to talk about every drug I've ever taken with regards to bodybuilding. Uh, from the very beginning right up until now. I may well forget some things, but I'll try and be as completely open as possible and try and remember everything. And we'll do it with the help of my Instagram. Uh, so we'll go through kind of the, the stages of my physique from that to, to now and, uh, and give you guys hopefully a bit of an insight into what I've had to do to get to this position of, I guess, my peak, which was top 10 at the New York Pro. My first cycle was when I was 24. Um, I'd competed a few times naturally, competed with the UK BFF at the time. Basically, the, the aim there was to start that ascendancy towards IFBB. Uh, my goal here was to win a decent level show and then try and get qualified for some, from, for some uh, international shows, which I did by winning this show, which was Men's Physique Junior at UKBFF. And I was completely natural at this point. I was going up against people that weren't. Not that I knew that at the time, but I was natty. Natty. What I basically did after that was I kind of realised I was like, I'm going to have to go assisted here to, to turn pro. And off the back of that season, which in the end went quite well, it was cool for me. It kind of gave me that spark. I was like, I think I, I think I can do this, but I'm going to need a bit of help. And really, I'd already proven to myself I could do this naturally. You know, I, got, I didn't get shredded, but at the time I thought I was shredded. I got lean for a show. I competed. I did well. I enjoyed the process. I knew I wanted to do it again. And really, I was very confident that actually taking that route to being assisted was going to change my life and change the course of it for the better. Um, and I still back that decision now. And my first cycle took me from this point of, of, of natty to my first uh, assisted off season, which was probably around this mark. Um, at the time, felt pretty jacked to be fair. I can't remember what weight I was here, but I think I got, I definitely got well in excess of 100 kilos maybe around 105, something like that. Um, and all I did for that cycle, which at the time I thought was the best thing to do, now I realise it wasn't, was basically take, I think I took 550 meg of test in Anthate a week, and that was it, nothing else. At the time, I think that was overkill. Like nowadays, we'd start people on much less, like anywhere from 150 to 200, and then titrate that up. Obviously, I didn't know better at the time. I got that information from like Trained by JP at the time, which I guess was probably the best source of info. And that, uh, in fairness, gave me obviously very, very good results. And there we go. So I got to 107 kilos, which is the heaviest I've ever been. I was eating 5,500 calories a day and as I said, taking 550 meg of test. So I started prep around 108 kilos. As I went into prep, obviously I had a, I had a period of time cruising, so I, I dropped down and then I went into a prep. On that prep, I went from 107.6 kilos, good post there, mate, down to, I was 93 kilos. So I managed to get pretty lean. That prep, I used testosterone again, I used Mastron and I used Clenbuterol towards the end. So again, that was fairly, fairly simple that cycle, but got myself pretty lean. Managed to come second at the Amateur Olympia in Spain in my height class, which that really kind of solidified for me that I'd done the right thing. And so that prep went on for another couple of weeks or so, and then I did a show at the Two Bros show, which I think was one of the first ones. Um, and to be fair, that kind of crushed me. <laughs> I came fifth and I was fuming because I thought I was on the cusp of my, I got the cusp of my pro card. Um, I actually blamed that on a shit tan, which I still believe. Anyway, after that, I came off. Um, this was still a period of time where I thought that sort of blasting and cruising was the right thing to do, um, which I think now in terms of like health and in terms of optimal muscle gain, muscle retention probably isn't the best. You basically, you basically stop taking exogenous hormones in order to get your natural hormones going again, um, but then you just shut them down again. So from my perspective nowadays, if you're a competitor and you can compete, you know, every every so every few years and you want to maintain as much as muscle as possible, make as much progress as you can, probably not the best idea. So that was, uh, I'd come off at that point. It was after that prep that I then got in touch with my first coach. Once again, began another cycle for off season. That year, I used testosterone, equipoise, which now I look back on was a pretty terrible decision and, and ran that up for a, a good period of time as well. I got fairly decent results from that cycle um, and off the back of the previous cycle, I thought I was kind of on the cusp of getting that pro card. So I only spent a year on that cycle. I think I got up to 106 kilos, but in probably, yeah, in much better shape and definitely more heavily muscled. I uh, know, take it back. 109 kilos, so I held 109 kilos, so I got an additional four kilos on my heaviest weight ever and at a decent level of body comp. 
way. As I descended into that prep, um, that was probably the first time that I was kind of exposed to a lot more drugs. So that, that prep I used testosterone, Mastron, Winstrol, Anavar, Clen, T3, and Trend for like the last four weeks. So that, that cycle went that cycle went pretty hard. Again, I think back and I'm wondering how much I really got out of all those compounds. And that is not something I would have I'd run now. Uh, or at least it's not something I would have run back then. However, that prep did end up in me receiving my pro card uh, after a long run of, of four shows. I finally got it at Denmark, um, which is this picture here. I actually think my best look of that year was probably this one, which was at Spain two or three weeks before. That prep really took it out of me. It was a bit of an express like shotgun prep as well. I got peeled in about six or seven weeks. There's actually a video which I can put the card to, uh, which I've called Rapid Fat Loss, and that kind of goes through all the things that I was taking and, and what I did, I think. So that was that. And, uh, and at that point, again, I still thought that blasting cruising was the right thing to do. So it came off completely. Um, unfortunately, that left me in a pretty crap position. I remember being pretty much at my smallest that I'd been for a long time. I think I dropped right back to around 101, 102 kilos. Pretty small at this point compared to what I'd been at. But this is where I was at and I felt pretty small at that point. Um, but this was the time when I got in touch with Callum. So my current coach, Cal, who I, I, who I joined at that point after kind of winning my pro card, coming off for a bit and almost starting from scratch, um, we went, then went back into an off-season and that was probably the period of time in which I put on the most muscle, I believe. We pushed up from about 100 kilos up to, right up to about 120 and that was the heaviest that I've been um, ever, obviously by, by quite a stretch. Uh, so at this point I'd reached 110 and then another 10 kilos went on and I pushed right up to this guy here. I think I, was, I, think I managed to get to 119 in these pictures. Um, and just for, probably for the first time started feeling like a bodybuilder. So there we go, that was the, the heaviest I got to at that point. We then dropped back in a cruise and it was at this point that the lockdown came around. Really, during a lockdown, no point pushing loads of drugs if you've got nowhere to train. Um, and, uh, and like everyone else, I was with the bands and dumbbells and occlusion bands for a good period of time. So we cruised and I used that time period of time to sort of tidy up. Um, and I ended that lockdown in much, much better condition. So we can see here, took off 10 kilos. So back to around 110 and in much better condition here. Still not unbelievable, but, but much better. And then when lockdown ended, we went back into the second kind of push up, which would be the final one before my pro card prep. We then pushed back up to around 116, but in kind of much better condition. Um, so I then began my prep in a much, much better position with a lot more muscle, but in better shape. So 114 kilos here, but pretty lean. I was pretty happy to be on a beach here in Dubai and felt like I was in a really good spot. And I think this was kind of the final picture of that off season when I was about to go into a prep. And again, in that period of time, I used testosterone again as, as ever. NPP was what got me up to 120, 120 kilos the first time, uh, as well as Masteron, or it might have been Primabolin. We either used one of those in order to sort of modulate that androgen to estrogen ratio. Unfortunately, as time went on, my gyno was getting a little bit worse and a little bit worse, and that's why I've just had to have that operation. At this point here was the, was the time when we started implementing growth hormone. So growth hormone went in in that second half of that off season, and I found that really benefited me in terms of like staying lean, but also being able to grow tissue. So I think the main benefit of growth when you're using it is how it synergizes with anabolics. So growth on its own, not really gonna do anything. Testosterone on its own will do something, but together they make they have a really nice synergy. Um, and that gave me a really a good opportunity to kind of keep growing, but stay a lot leaner. And that is where I ended up. And then we went into prep. So that is the most recent prep, which as a kind of a final point, uh, as, the, as the, the, best, the best place we got to was top 10 New York Pro. And in this prep, I was using, again, testosterone, Primo in quite high amounts, um, Trembolone towards the end, Anavar, Winstrol, T3, T4, Clen, <laughs> and Growth Hormone. So a real big stack there. In terms of total amounts, not a completely scary number. So testosterone was all relatively low. Primo is the only one that was boosted up. Um, Trend stayed really low and obviously Oral stayed low and they were only in towards the end. Um, but that is where I ended up. So top 10 New York Pro. I then dropped back to a cruise and that brings me up to 
the last sort of eight weeks prior to my right. operation. And in that period of time, we ran testosterone really, really low dose just in order to make sure that the guy didn't get any worse prior to the operation. Primo was driven up to around 600 as a, as a sort of maximum. And then Lantus, so uh, a form of insulin that was just helping with the high amount of carbs that we were using. And then finally growth hormone. So that brings you up to speed with, with my kind of last gaining muscle phase. And then since then, and since the operation, I've just been cruising um, and using growth hormone to help with the healing. So that brings you right up to speed. It sounds like a lot of drugs when I say it like that, but that gives you an insight into the kind of full journey from start to finish and where we are now. Hope you enjoyed that. Very honest, very raw video. Uh, drop a like, comment if you've got any questions on any of it, and obviously subscribe to the channel. Happy to bring more of this content if, it's, uh, if there's an appetite for it, and um, I'll see you in the next one.